we are back on the Peterbilt Duramax swap and currently uh, placing the steering, the seating, and trying to get this tilt nose to where to tilt. We found that our steps are hitting the bumper, so we're going to have to cut this bumper and relieve it a little bit on each side we can get this nose to tilt all the way. Okay, so we've got this thing tilted. I had to trim out the bumper for these steps. I just cut it flush all the way down. And right now, what I'm doing is I'm mounting up the uh, the brake master cylinder and getting the lines and stuff stretched out. There's the steering column. Uh, we've got a universal joint coming and a Heim joint coming because it's going to have to take a turn here and go through here and come out here somewhere. I'm not sure yet. There's the steering column. Uh, I've got the brake pedal in there. It looks high, but it's not. Once the floorboard is put back in there, it'll look more uh, like it's supposed to be. We've actually got, we had to push this thing out of the shop and tarp the doors up, tarp the door up so we could keep this thing, this place uh, air conditioned. That's working pretty good. It's hot here in North Carolina. But it's coming along slowly but surely. It's just fitting, fitting things now. Okay, so we've got our steering column mounted. I used uh, part of the original mounting system and just drilled some new holes in the uh, dash to hang it and just bolted it to the firewall. Then we've got tilt steering, automatic trans, got the brake pedal hooked up and we actually do have brakes because we never did take the hydraulic portion of the brake pressure loose. We have, uh, this morning I've finished hanging the master cylinder. It's all bolted up. Um, the, the power steering reservoir, which is also uh, feeds the hydro boost for the power brakes. It's mounted to the firewall and all plumbed. Had to do a little reshaping of some lines here to get it to stretch that far and then to line back up so we've got our steering column hanging here uh, we've got a, a bearing for it but we're waiting on a, a new u-joint so basically it'll it'll ride about right there and take a turn to meet up with this steering u-joint here that hose will be up out of the way but that's where our steering column is coming through the firewall. So uh, as soon as that U-joint gets here, we'll have steering and brakes. So um, I'm thinking it's about time to start feeding the uh, Duramax wiring harness into this old cab. That's where we're at. Let's see, we'll walk back over here. We started looking at fitting the tank up under this door. The tank, the strap, and then the step that goes down the tank. So that'll really complete the look over here on this side. 
Yeah, it's coming along slowly but surely. Well, I guess I won't do the wiring harness now. I got to get this this block right here hung up here if it'll stretch that far. That's got the the computer, the ECM in it, and the fuse block and all that good stuff. I think the biggest challenge is probably going to be to get our intercooler back integrated. Okay, it's Friday morning. Had to leave a little early yesterday, early yesterday, and didn't get everything done we wanted to get done, but we did get a good portion done. We have, uh, this is goofy, or y'all are gonna think this is goofy, but I don't think it is. <clears throat> we didn't have room for the intercooler up front. Uh, like it was from the factory. This nose of this Peterbilt is so narrow, um, couldn't really get it in there without cutting the sides of the, the hood. And even if we did that, then it, it still wouldn't close. But anyway, just not enough room. So what we decided to do, we mounted the intercooler above the engine here. And uh, there's plenty of airflow between it and above it and the grill will still pull enough air through i think uh, to keep that thing cool enough and uh, so that's just what we decided to do we made a mount here to hang it off of and then i fabricated a mount there that sits on top of the radiator shroud that's a big steel uh, shroud on that radiator so plenty of support there and uh right now we're um <clears throat> well we started fitting up some tubes and modifying the tubes to fit the turbo tubes want to go from there and elbow into the intercooler there and then back there is Another spout. So we'll come off of here, down through here, into this spout right there. So that's what we're gonna work on first. This morning is just getting these tubes um, formed to complete that. Hopefully our uh, steering knuckle will come in today soon enough to get that complete and then we can start putting our wiring in there. Ultimately, we'd like to be able to drive this thing, crank this thing up and have it movable today. So we can move it around and it's not tying up the shop anymore. So we'll see what happens. Oh, we gotta get the coolant tank, coolant reservoir mounted today too. Up there, so. A lot of work. Turn it over, brother, it's smarter. This will work really good, as long as it don't leak. All right, so do we need this It shouldn't leak, piece? I welded it. Right? Do we need this vacuum piece? Isn't she wonderful? Isn't she beautiful? I think I got a big bucket in where I'll just sit on top of it. This for my goats. Chickens. I'm so a lot of feed in there. Well, I'm planning on one. I won't have to put feed in here for three or four days. Get, get two of them and get one of them the last ten days. You can go to Hawaii with me. Huh? I ain't going down for a while. All right, we got our 
tube that we just made mounted. So we've got all our intercooler all mounted and plumbed. I may put a little strut on that to keep it from moving around. But other than that, I think we're good. I gotta be conscious of that kind of you gotta have some material, some content. You gotta have content. Okay, so we've got our, our coolant reservoir mounted. We've got our intercooler mounted. We've got all our brakes and power steering mounted. tubes to our intercooler mounted still have to do the steering and let's see I need to run my shifter cable through there and get it hooked to the steering column which that's not a problem poke a hole poke a hole in there somewhere but it is coming along Switch. So there, 
then we have this says passenger side main harness. Alrighty, I'm working on the steering today, and I've got uh, the steering column cut in half. As you can see, I've got one half of it hanging. Well, maybe you can't see. I don't know. I've got one half of it hanging there. That's an inch steel rod. That's the factory shaft. That's hanging on the steering column. And then this is the other half. This is the other half here. It is still telescope. So we'll keep that safety feature. I've got a bearing here that I pressed into this uh, two and a half inch steel collar that I cut. And then uh, once we get the two ends connected, I'm trying to do this. holding it with one hand, holding the camera with one hand. And Okay, so once we get, there you go, these two ends connected, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this inch steel tubing to connect these two, I'll weld them together like that. And after, <clears throat> I'm trying to think through this, after I get that connected, I'll just spot weld it for now. Uh, what I'll do is I'll make a, a bracket to hold that collar. I'll weld some kind of a bracket to that collar and mount it to the shock tower just to hold, hold that steering column up where it needs to be. So that's what I'm working on today. This, this is some heavier steering than we're used to working on. Usually it's more like half inch rod or three quarter rod. This is an inch rod, pretty heavy stuff. So I'll, I'll film it, film the uh, finished pro product here a little bit. All right, we got our steering column welded up. Got this one inch shaft spliced into a U-joint. And this is the, everything's hot right now. This is the uh, bearing that I made to fasten to the shock tower. 
to hold that thing in place. So we'll get it mounted here in just a minute after it cools down. Okay, so there she is. Um, complete steering shaft. All the way through its bearing. I made that to where it would bolt up or bolt loose so that that steering column can come apart if need be. I welded the U-joint in. It's also uh, slotted to where it fits in there and, and grabs. And then uh, we had to splice it there into where the steering column goes into the firewall. Okay, so we'll turn the steering wheel here. And as you can see, that does transfer to the steering shaft. Basic geometry. Got my fingers in the way. And uh, this is a heavy duty truck, so it is going to take some power steering and the engine running to actually turn those steering or turn those wheels. And I have got my head pretty good there. I'm bleeding. All right, so I've got the battery hooked up. And we're gonna see if this old girl will crank. So let's hit the key here. I already know it will because I've already cranked it, but just for you guys. There she is running. The dash, the gauge cluster isn't coming on. I don't know what's up with that yet. Maybe a blown fuse, not sure yet. Okay guys, this is the first time this truck has been out in several months. And uh, I think we're gonna stop the video right there and make a part three. And then as it goes to 
get the floors and the, uh, there's going to be another axle and then the tanks right here to make it really swing low but anyway this is going to be the end of uh, part three and as we get that other stuff done we'll um, post another update on it but there it is 1972 I think it was Peterbilt cab and nose on a late model Duramax chassis and as low as we can get it that's as low as as we could possibly get this thing I think it'll look sweet after it's all said and done thanks a lot for watching our videos it really means a lot I hope you'll stay tuned we hope to uh, produce a lot more interesting stuff in the future thanks again y'all take care